turn it around that way. Yeah. Because <laughs> you tend to lean away from it. Yeah, it's You should know that by now. Normally I'm in that chair. Yeah. I tend to lean, but it's because I... <coughs> Time for Thinking Real Estate, Jackie Austin is our hostess today. Yay, hi. Hi, Jackie. Brought with me our favorite guest, Ron Ellison. One of our favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Remind Laura of that one. I will. <laughs> favorite. Favorite, favorite. So, um, well, we don't really have a plan for today. We just kind of thought we'd chat. And Normally. See. I know. We're usually so prepared. <laughs> You know, I got less than 24 hours notice. I have a plan. Oh, really? You know, I, I was kind of worried when I when I pulled in the parking lot, Rick Baxter fired up his car. I thought I was at MIS. Oh, yeah. You don't have a noise ordinance out here in Summit Township? And he's a dangerous driver, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, you know, let's just kind of get started here. What do you, what's well, your plan? My plan is, yeah, I can't you play gotta, golf today. You gotta play. Look, I brought those, too. Well, you can play golf. last time... Last time I was on the show, I asked Jackie about statistics, and I think she wanted to shoot me because she hadn't updated in a while. <laughs> Within four hours when she got back, um, she sent them over to me. And I guess the interesting thing, you know, I watch the legal news. I watch the legal news every every week to keep track. First insertions in, in, the, in the legal news to see what kind of activity. Right. And it, it appears to have slowed down, but... There must, Jackie, still be a lot of inventory because what you sent me um, through March, 46% were still foreclosures yeah. in, in closed transactions. And, yeah, that's down maybe 5% from a year ago. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still curious what the inventory is out there because watching the legal news, it should be tapering off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think things are leveling out. I had somebody ask me yesterday how foreclosures were going, and I... My gut response was that things are leveling out. We're not getting the influx like we had back in 2010 or 9 when we had 85% of the market was foreclosures. Right. You know, now we're down to half that. <laughs> Isn't that nice? So leveling out good or bad? Uh, I, good. It's got to be really good. Yeah. You know, because the first thing it says that if foreclosures are down, that means that some of the modification stuff is working. There's still a lot of frustration there. Um, but... You know, I think I think the economy is stabilized, and if foreclosures are down, that means people are are making their payments. And yeah. you know, the stories of being underwater, they're still there. But remember, you're not underwater unless you're trying to sell your property. Right. Well, that's true. And you know, it's just from my end, just talking to sellers. I'm talking to far fewer sellers who feel desperate. Mm -hmm. um, they feel like they actually are in a position that they can sell their house and either walk away with something or break even, um, they don't feel like they're going to be, um, you know, falling apart at any point. So. Well, and the other thing that we have today that we didn't have two or three years ago, you saw people walking out, they, they buy a house today, and then they would walk away from their current house, that sense of mm -hmm. entitlement. Yeah. The banks have cracked down on that. When, when you still own a house today and you're trying to buy that other house, the banks are much more thorough. Why are you doing it? I mean, they're interrogating, and, and some of the buyers are getting frustrated. Um, but that should be the case. It should be the it case be because careful. we know what the intent is. Yeah. So the market has figured out what some of these people were doing. And, and that's, Took them quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> 60 Minutes figured it out real quick, yeah. but it, it took them, you know, the, the lending industry a while. And, uh, you know, I... A week or so ago uh, on, on Bill George's show, he talked about some of the proposed new lending programs coming out that, that kind of scares me that how quickly we forget as, as far as we're going to go back to, yeah. you know, some of this 90% financing, some, some as bad as it was before. So I, I hope somebody listens to what Bill had to say because that is scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that started the whole right. downfall. And, you know, Jackie, the other thing is, again, we hear a lot about short sales, but again, in these statistics, less than 5%. Yeah, we're um, actually seeing a taper off of short sales as well. I um, I was specializing in them, or I do specialize in them, but I was getting lots and lots of short sale listings, and right now I don't know that we have any listings that are short sales. So mm -hmm. I think um, the banks are actually, they're 
pretty difficult right now as far as short sales, unfortunately, because right. I think that's a good alternative to foreclosures. But they also, the banks are seeing that there is an uptick in the market and they want to get as much out of those short sales as they can. So. Yeah. And again, when you talk, you can't blame them. No, I mean when you talk about an uptick in the market, you know the stories of of a few years ago when a good property came on the market and there were multiple offers. Mm -hmm. That is encouraging. So again, it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, you're not going to see the, the the rise in in values um, double digit like we did six, seven, eight years ago. But it's it's gradual. And again, the good properties. Uh, Good listings are, are good, shortage right yeah, now. Yeah, good listings are shortage. You know, I looked at the inventory, just the whole Jackson County residential. We were um, at about 846, I think, last time I looked, which was up from the previous time I had looked, but not by very much. Right. So we're still in desperate need of some good listings. I know I've been out on four or five listing appointments this week alone, which is a good sign. People are starting to to put their houses on the market and they're good listings too. So, so does that mean Ron people are just really sitting tight? I, I think people are, are sitting tight, they're analyzing the market versus what they were doing a year ago. I, I, again a year ago everybody panicked mm -hmm. or two years ago panicked and uh, and felt this entitlement of, of being underwater and I can walk away or whatever but I think people are now realizing that the short sale isn't the magic answer. In other words, there are repercussions to your credit for mm -hmm. a short sale. Mm -hmm. And I remember four or five years ago when we first started seeing the, the short sale phenomena, I was teaching a class at the Board of Realtors and I said to, to a group, I said, tell me the advantage to a seller of a short sale. And the room was silent. Mm -hmm. And then finally somebody spoke up and gave an answer that I thought might be correct. One realtor spoke up and said, well, we get paid. <laughs> but, but I mean, my, my question was, what do you tell a seller the advantage mm -hmm. to a short sale? Well, I can tell you, when we were, um, whenever I talked to a seller about doing short sales, one of the big advantages is that they can deal with the situation and get it over with. Um, I, we had one seller that just closed a couple of weeks ago. She had been dealing with the pressure of her mortgage and dealing with the bank for a long time. And when she came to us, she was just, you know, it was had broken her, basically. We put her house in the market, got an offer, got the short sale closed fairly quickly. That was a great bank to work with. And she was just so relieved because it was over. That was the biggest advantage to her. Is she right. didn't have to worry about it anymore. She, she, she lost though on the She they ended up waiving the deficiency on hers, which was great. Okay. And um, she got to walk away free and clear and she got out of the house. So <laughs> that was her biggest thing is she was just relieved to be out from underneath that. Not everybody's so lucky. Not everybody's so lucky, but that was that's a big one for a lot of sellers is they just want to get it over with. You know, one of the comments used to be, well, it's better for your credit if you do a short sale versus a foreclosure. And I always said be careful because these people only listen to parts of what you tell them. Right. So you do a short sale and their credit doesn't get better because you forgot to tell them uh, you got to make your credit card payment on time, and you got to make your car payment on time because mm -hmm. there are issues. Yeah, it, you know there are the credit one is all. What I always said was, you, it depends on how you handle it. If you handle it right, then it can be benefit. It, it doesn't benefit your credit, but it doesn't hurt it as bad as maybe a foreclosure would. Right. But um, you know you have to handle it right, and you have to selective hearing. Yeah. You know, Greg. Occasionally, I I play golf and. Two summers ago, I was in a golf outing, and I was in a group with a guy from Chicago who, who worked for one of the big PMI companies. Mm -hmm. And I said, so i got to ask, from your standpoint, I asked him the question. I said, tell me the advantage, because again, I hear all these stories. Your credit's better, um, two years, three years, you're okay. And, and the guy from the PMI company, and he just not, he was one, not, he was not one of the worker bees. And he said, Ron? I have no idea what the advantage is, again, because we can't control all the other stuff these people are going to be. I mean, your credit is not just your mortgage, your short sale, your foreclosure. And I see these real estate people go to a lender, and the lender says, well, we're going to counsel them. And in two years, they're going to be better, or in three years, they're going to be better. But, you know, 
that does they quit going to school. Right. They have to. And they, they have forget to stick how with they got it. there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So, yeah. But uh, hard to predict the future. <laughs> I've told people many times because I, I will get asked a question. What do you think? I said if I had the answers, yeah. I wouldn't be here. Would there, I? There you go. I'd be I'd be calling you in from a golf course somewhere <laughs> or a casino somewhere um, or or a ballpark somewhere. Right. But uh, you know, one of the other questions and and Jackie knew I was going to bring this up I as know. we walked in. <laughs> okay. And, and is, is Laura listening on the internet? I don't know. And, and I don't know that we really, it's, maybe it's been too quick, but I am watching and I am asking um, with all the stuff that's going on in the city with the rental registry and inspections and whatever and tearing some of these homes down, which, you know, some of this we need. I, I hear all the rumors and all the stories about how it's going to affect the rental market in the city of Jackson. It's going to get better. It's going to be boycotted. And so, Jackie, you've had 38 <laughs> seconds because as we walk in, I'm just curious because I know your mom, Bill, have, have uh, income properties. Yep. What are you seeing or is it too quick to, to well, determine? Well, I think, you know, when you say is it getting better, you got to think of, well, what does better mean to each person? Um, <laughs> so, um, sorry, there's a weird noise going on over here. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I, just a little weather advisory. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no problem. We don't need to go to the basement or anything? No problem. <laughs> Is there a basement here? <laughs> no, there's no basement here. <laughs> We're in trouble. <laughs> um, oh. No. is what they call it. Um, I think that eventually it will be a great thing for the city. Unfortunately, we're seeing growing pains right now. And, um, you know, people are afraid of what's, you know, what they're going to have to go through if they purchase rental properties in the, in the city. But the, on the flip side of that, if people aren't buying rental properties, maybe more people will buy owner-occupied properties and we'll see more of an increase, whereas right now we're at, I think, over 50% of our city of Jackson is um, rental. rentals. Yeah. So. so, I mean, in the future, that would be a statistic to see mm -hmm. how that holds as far as is it still 50%, because, mm -hmm. again, I, I, there's a lot of indecision, a lot of rumors running around out there. And, yeah. Um, what are they? Well. There's all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> Come on. That was a straight question. I guess I hear it constantly. Um, and that's why I asked Jackie. I hear people say, well, I, I'm not going to have my buyers look in the city because of the rental registry and, you know, things like that because they're worried about repairs. Um, yeah, you know, honestly, I, I hear that occasionally when I get a buyer that calls and they're looking for investment properties and they say, well, I don't want to be in the city and, you know, I always ask why is, why is that. And a lot of the times it's because they've heard these crazy things about how strict the city is, but I think that that's a good thing. You know, if you're intending to be a good landlord, all you have to do is follow the rules and you'll have great properties, you'll have great tenants, you'll end up making more money because you've got tenants that will appreciate the um, the work well, you have to put into there's it. There's got to be some rules around here. Oh, there has Absolutely. to be, and and we're not, we're not used to having rules. No. It's kind of like raising kids, right? <laughs> but I ran into... Um, Marty Griffin and, and Patrick Birch the other night. And, you know, my office is downtown, but as I drive out this way, I kind of drive through what I'm going to call as a bad neighborhood. And I told him, it is nice to drive through there 
and this corner's cleaned up, mm -hmm. and this I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day, and yes, you do need rules, and I think we're not used to having rules. Right. And, and it's a growing pain, so it's it's going to be interesting to watch. But yeah, well, that there is positive. That is, uh, along with the garbage situation, is the first attempts that we've seen in a long time to get things cleaned up. Right. Sure. Yeah. I, you know, I'll tell you, I'm all for the garbage ordinance. I think that that is going to be great for the city. Um, and I, you know, as a homeowner, I am looking forward to one, the advantages of having a citywide um, hauler, and then two, being able to drive through other neighborhoods that um, will be able to benefit from it as well. So I just think it's, you know, I think it, the city is moving in the right direction. People well, just need to get on board. <laughs> with the garbage situation, it's not like we're reinventing the wheel. Right. No. You know, exactly. I live in the metropolitan area there in Manchester. <laughs> yep. My garbage is picked up single hauler. Now, God forbid, we have recycling. Um, I can't wait for that. You know, and, and I guess what I'm saying is subdivisions, I mean, this isn't new. I mean, there are subdivisions that have restrictions. Again, it goes back to we're not used to change, and mm -hmm. maybe some people will say we might have moved too hastily, but it's going to be on the ballot. We're going to, an I mean, the city's going to analyze it, but mm -hmm. um, I think these are good changes. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. Less cost. There's, I mean, there's so many advantages, and um, you know, I think people once they learn about the the, pr the program and the way that it's going to work, or the way that we expect it to work, they actually do enjoy it, um, or they do think that it's a good idea. Those that are, um, you know, against it, maybe just need to make sure that they have all the information before they make their decision, whether against it or for it. You know, you just need to make sure you have all the information. That's yeah, I think once important. implemented. Everything will be fine, right. but it's the period here of I trying mean, to get We're not, we're not used to change. And, yeah. and, and I can tell you, you know, I put my garbage out, my garbage can out, and my recycling out on uh, Wednesday mornings, and I leave early, and sometimes I don't get home until later. I can tell you, my, my neighbors don't want to see my stuff by the curb, and they'll put it up by my garage. <laughs> and, and that goes back to, you know, people take pride in, in having mm -hmm. things cleaned up. And, sure. Um, in Manchester, we have, um, I don't know the right term, but I throw all my recycling into a bin. I don't have yep. to sort it. Yep. And since we went to that, recycling in, in the village of Manchester is up over 25%. That's great. So again, that's, That would be the same program that the city would implement is a single um, funnel, I guess. <laughs> I don't know really what you call it either, but you just have to throw it all in one thing. And I know I always thought it'd be a great idea to recycle, but I just don't have time to take my stuff to a, one of those locations and things like that. So, you know, I'm excited about that aspect of it as well. So, so it appears that things are getting better in the city. I think well, so. Yeah. Yay. They're trying. <laughs> They're trying. Well, even downtown, I mean, you've got, um, you know, the Sheridan. Yeah, that it, it, it's down. Yeah. That can only be positive. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to get another new restaurant slash sports bar downtown within the next thirty days. You know, we've got um, the, the 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 brewery that's going to be down where Cools was at. So a lot of positive things oh, yeah, are going on in the city, and a lot of people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, it's like the weather makes the market get better, and and you know, new businesses. Um, it's just, it's going to be good for everybody downtown. Right. So, so do you have any uh, houses you're Is pushing that time today, Jackie? Already? Yeah. Uh, basically, we just got one price reduction right now. Um, we just reduced the price on 2812 Wooddale. It's a condo in the Timber Meadows, right off of Spring Arbor Road, right um, not too far from Lumen Christie. Uh, the price on that one is one sixteen nine. It's a two bedroom, one and a half baths, and it's got over twenty two hundred square feet in that. Um, unit. It's a, a cute little place, especially if you want some maintenance-free stuff going on where you don't have to take care of the yard or anything. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So, um, so that's all I've got today, but any anything else you want to say? Well, you know, when I came in, I told Greg, you know, we just had the weather alert. Uh, <laughs> there are flood warnings in Manchester, <laughs> the Raisin River. I got, I got to get home early and move the sheep to higher ground, so <laughs> I can include that in his weather report. We do have a tornado watch uh, as we leave you from uh, uh, Fort Branch in Hillsdale County until 5 o'clock. Also a flood watch in effect in uh, Ingham County right now. Ron, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.